here I am again looking at more problems related to segregated instruction. First of all, segregated instruction. Students often enter, when they go to a pull-out room, something segregated from the general ed classroom, a situation where instruction is different from or inconsistent with what has been going on in the general ed classroom. It's totally different. Now, students with special needs need more consistency, more coordination of instruction. But this lack of coordination, and I'm going to use reading as an example, they go from one reading class to a different sort of thing happening in a pull-out situation. Instead of having one reading class, they have two. For example, in a typical classroom, students with special needs, learning, learners with disabilities, often have their general reading instruction and then go someplace for remediation. All right. So instead of having one reading class, they have two. Instead of one curriculum, they have two. Instead of one reading philosophy, they have two. Instead of having a reading class that emphasizes meaning, pull-out classrooms tend to uh, emphasize letter recognition, emphasize skills outside of context. All right. So our least able learners need more consistent instruction, more coordinated instruction, not less. And this is the very opposite of what happens in pull-out or segmented instruction. This leads to fragmentation. A lot of drill and practice on little skills and sub-skills. Things like learning to read become more abstract. It's harder to learn. You can't see the whole when you're only offered little bits of instruction. If you're never allowed to actually read and write for real purposes, but spend the day drilling and practice on things, you don't get a sense of the whole. So your learning experience is fragmented. Students with learning disabilities need more greater holes. They need instruction that is, uh, 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 goes across the curriculum, thematic, instead of little segmented boxes. That's hard. It becomes abstract. Think about if you and I had to learn in little 50 and 40 minute slots of time instead of being able to be immersed in reading a textbook or understanding or learning. As well, this fragmentation, when students leave the gen ed classroom, they miss out on what is happening in the gen ed classroom. If they leave the classroom, the classroom doesn't stand still. They're doing something. Are you saying what they're missing is not important? They have to come back then and try to catch up, be it science or social studies or reading or whatever. Not good. Not good at all. Segregation, they also miss the social interaction and modeling that occurs by interacting with other students. We know that social interaction enhances learning. We know because the body of research has told us such. So all students need to hear the thoughts of others. That's how they develop their reasoning skills. All students need others as modeling. Segregation also tends to reinforce problematic behaviors. They're apart from their peers. You don't have that normal checks and balances that generally occur. And they feel different. They feel uh, um, uh, not the same as the different when they're pulled out. Now, I am uh, segregation, segregation in a classroom, all right? It is separate, but it is not equal. I wanted to make sure that came out just the right, just right. The instruction often used for remediation differs greatly than what happens in the classroom. And this is not me. This is the research I looked at. The instruction differs greatly. There's less individualization of instruction in a pullout. Yes, you have small groups, but it is the same thing with all students in the small group. An inclusive classroom has multi-level instruction. That instruction varies for uh, to meet the needs of GT, LT, EBD, all your letters. Uh, it is individualized. So segregation in classrooms, it's separate, but it's not equal. We want them to be equal. We want the same. Now, I am not saying that pullout should not be used. I wrote that fully so there would be no mistake about this. It should 
not be used exclusively. If that's all you're doing to meet the needs of students with learning disabilities, and that's what we are generally talking about here, it should be used knowledgeably, meaning you use a body of research to guide you, not I thinkisms and not tradition. We need to find the least restricted environment in which students can learn, not the most restrictive. And again, I'm not saying it should not be used, it should be used knowledgeably. Richard Allenden has some great stuff in looking at research on uh, inclusion and segregated. He said for students who are having troubles with reading, low-level readers need more high-quality instruction, the kind that occurs in a general education classroom. And there's my phone going. I'm just going to ignore this because I'm almost done. They need more of the same, not more different. Segregated instruction often differs greatly from what's happening in the gen ed classroom. All right? Instruction in remediation, as I said, it's more slow it down and break it up in reading words in isolation. Sorry for the phone. I'm going to answer it now. Uh, I didn't want to stop the video.